Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to do another set of counting problems. Um, in this case, it's going to be uh, problems where the order of the objects don't matter. Uh, so they're just pure uh, combinations, I guess, is the skill. Uh, so this is a continuation of my last two videos. Uh, and again, the goal of these videos is to identify the different types of problems you can have uh, with similar sort of setups. And so we're gonna do two types of setups uh, in this video. One setup is going to be pulling uh, balls of various colors from containers. Um, and then the other set of problems we're going to do is what I call committee questions or council questions, uh, where you need to form uh, committees with uh, various subgroups of uh, individuals. And in this case, we're gonna do animals, but anyway. So uh, as with my last two videos, I'm not actually going to pull out a calculator to figure out the exact value. We're just going to go through uh, what you would put into your calculator uh, to get the correct answer. Like what is the problem actually asking? So uh, let's just jump right in and see if we can figure this out. Uh, this first one's probably actually the trickiest. Um, a container has nine yellow balls and four violet balls. Okay, sure. So there's 13 balls total. In how many unique orders can different colors of balls be taken from the container if all the balls must be removed? Now this one's a little bit of like a fundamental counting theory trap, right? Like, like, do you think of like the first option? Well, there's two colors you could pick. And then the second option, there's two colors you can pick. And then the third option, there's two. And then the fourth option, there's two. But what if all four of those were violet? Okay, then we need to split cases. Like it becomes a mess if you try to think of this as a fundamental counting principle question. Um, it's doable, but it ends up being like a zillion different cases. And it's way harder than it needs to be. Instead, what we want to do is we want to think about like all the different like arrangements. Let's say let's say we're we're just doing like um, yellow, yellow, violet, yellow, violet, violet, yellow, yellow, violet, yellow, and so on. Basically, if you just imagine instead of just pulling them out one at a time, imagine that you're lining them up in a row, and then it's how many arrangements? How many different arrangements of the thirteen balls are possible? Well, there's thirteen balls but nine of the yellow balls are identical and four of the violet balls are identical, which is kind of a cool way of, of figuring it out. Another way we, you can think of it is you've got 13 places and choose four places to put uh, violet balls. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the same as uh, choose uh, nine places for yellow, right? It doesn't matter. Um, so it's either 13 choose four or 13 choose nine. And um, actually 13 choose four, if you actually go through the definition, is 13 factorial over four factorial nine factorial, which is the same as this, which is the same as this. So they're all the exact same calculation. It just you either want to think of it as, okay, I've got 13 places. I'm going to choose four positions where violet balls were chosen, or I'm going to choose nine positions where yellow balls were chosen, or just think of it as like 13 letters and you need to rearrange the 13 letters. And if you think of the question that way, then the solution is um, much more uh, obvious, let's say. Okay, here's a slightly different version. Um, okay, so this one is... Um, eight indigo and four teal balls. How many sets of five balls can be selected from the container without any restrictions? Well, this is sets of balls. Um, so sets of five balls, you don't care the order that the balls were taken. So this first one, we cared about the orders because we cared about the order that the balls came out. In this case, we don't care about the orders. So this is just, I mean, there's 12 balls total. And we want to choose uh, five of them. So it's just 12 choose five. Simple as that. Okay, this one here, same idea. Three red, 10 yellow this time. Um, how many sets of four yellow balls can be selected from the container? Well, we don't even care about the red balls. It's just 10 yellow choose four. Okay, that one is maybe even easier than the last one. Uh, now this one here, we've got four yellow balls and six indigo balls. Now we want to choose four yellow balls. Well, that's all of them four choose four, uh, which, which is one. So that equals one, um, times of the six indigo balls. We want to choose uh, two. Uh, maybe I should change color for indigo. Indigo is like blue, right? So then uh, six choose two. So four times four choose four, which, which is one times six choose two. 
Cool. And uh, those are the, you know, choosing balls from container questions. Let's do a similar set of questions, this time about forming committees. Uh, we'll do committees of animals. Uh, the typical question for this, by the way, is choosing like girls and boys. Um, but, you know, uh, I don't really like those questions because as we know, um, gender is non-binary, right? Like there's more than just girls and boys. So let's just not go down that road. Let's just do animals instead. Everyone can agree that goats and donkeys are different. Um, okay, so on Animal Farm, uh, we're forming a committee of six animals uh, between nine goats and ten donkeys. How many committees can be formed with no restrictions? Well, we've got a total of 19 animals. And we want to choose six of them. So it's just 19 choose six. Okay. Um, okay, same setup. Five animals. We're choosing five animals from eight donkeys and 12 sheep. Okay. And then we want to choose three of the eight donkeys. So those donkeys are eight choose three. And we want to choose uh, two of the 12 sheep. So times of the 12 sheep, we want to choose two. Okay, that's not so bad. Um, now this is one that start, starts to get a little bit trickier. And um, there's, there's two ways to solve this. There's like the direct way and there's the indirect way. And the indirect way ends up being a, a lot easier. Okay, so same setup, a committee of seven this time from nine donkeys, 12 cows. Okay, sure. How many committees can be formed with at least one of the donkeys now anytime you see the word at least you should be having like like klaxon uh, 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 alarm 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 um at least you usually don't want to actually figure out the at least so like one way to do this would be like five cases uh the one donkey uh four cows case two donkeys three cows three donkeys two cows four donkeys one cow and five donkeys, zero cows. Um, and each of those calculations is the same as this, right? So you'd figure out your number of donkeys, you'd figure out your number of cows, multiply them and go. Okay. Um, but there's an easier way. So what we actually want to do is we want to figure out um, all committees, uh, ease, uh, with no restrictions. So all possible committees with no restrictions, um, there's a total of uh, 21 animals. So that's 21 choose seven animals. And then we're going to take away the cases we don't want. We don't want committees with no donkeys. So no donkeys means all cows. So from the 12 cows, we want to choose seven. So if you do uh, 21, cho 20, sorry, don't know why that one got huge. 21 choose seven minus 12 choose seven. Then this is all possible committees with no restrictions minus committees with no donkeys. And if we're taking away all of the possible committees with no donkeys, well, then we're left with committees where there's got to be at least one donkey. And that's way easier than doing one, two, three, four, five cases, each with two combinations. Like, ugh. Okay. This one, at least two donkeys. Again. So at least two donkeys. You don't want to do it directly, usually. What we're going to do is we're going to do all minus no donkeys minus one donkey. Right? So if all possible uh, committees, uh, in this case, there are 19 animals. And we want a committee of seven. So 19 choose seven. But we don't want committees with no donkeys. And no donkeys means it's all cows. So 11 choose seven. Now, we also don't want committees where there's one donkey. Because one donkey is not at least two donkeys. So we're going to have donkeys and cows. So we're going to choose one of the donkeys. And we're going to choose then six of the cows. And there are a total of eight donkeys to choose from. And there's a total of 11 cows to choose from. So we're going to do uh, all options is 19 choose 7 minus all cows, which is 11 choose 7 minus one donkey, six cows. And that's your number of possible uh, combinations. Okay, and one more, uh, just, you know, to show you how this, these cases can work. Uh, so same setup. Um, how many committees can be formed with at least one of the horses and one of the cows? Okay, so I just want you to 
pause right here and think, what are the sets of cases we don't want? This is the one, since we've got at least, we're going to want to do indirect. So we're going to do all minus what? What are the cases we need to take away? So what we need to take away is the case where there's no horses. No horses would be bad, because then that's not at least one of the horses. Um, and then we also need to take away no cows. Right, so if we take away the no horses option and take away the no cows options, then what's left must be the cases that have horses and cows. So all options, we've got a total of 19 animals, and we're doing a committee of five this time. No horses means all cows. That's the same thing as all cows. So all cows means from the 10 cows, we want to choose five. Minus no cows means all horses. So minus of the nine horses, we want to choose five. And there you have it.